Um, you can also join the live stream on Facebook at uh, Sango UMC. If you would like a ride, please contact the church office. And as always, please remember to fill out the attendance pad at the end of the pew to let us know that you are here to worship with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a joy to worship with all of you this morning. Just a note about the BUMC meeting that is happening next week. This is not a meeting where we are voting or talking about whether or not St. Bethlehem is disaffiliating. That has not been a conversation that has been had. This is just an informational meeting so that we know what is going on in the United Methodist Church and in the Tennessee Western Kentucky Conference. Because there is so much that we can find online and there are so many varying reports, this is just so that we all know what is going on. And so I hope that you'll be able to attend as we have, uh, as we share information about that and then have discussion. And also, there will be a potluck. And so we hope that you will stay for a fellowship meal after that. Most importantly, I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. To those who sit in darkness, light has dawned. To those who dwell in the gloom and despair, God's glorious presence has appeared. God is indeed our light and our salvation. We will follow Let us worship our God of light and promise. Let us celebrate the hope and joy of our salvation. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together the Church's One Foundation, hymn number 545.
come this morning with eyes stinging from the brightness of your glory. We have become so accustomed to the darkness that your radiant light sometimes overwhelms us. Open our eyes to the light of your dawn, that our souls may be flooded with love and mercy and joy. Open our hearts to receive your message of comfort and peace and security, that we may find rest in your loving, protective presence. Open our spirits to follow the path you put before us, that we may lead lives committed to your way. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, hymn number 290.
which is a celebration for our Asian American and Asian brothers and sisters in Christ. And this morning I woke up to a news alert that there had been a shooting at a Lunar New Year's Eve event in California. Ten are dead and at least ten more are wounded. And so I want us to pause for a moment and remember those victims and also all of the victims in this country who have been affected by gun violence.
He does not think that believers must all have identical views on things or must walk in lockstep with one another. Uniformity feels much easier than unity. Because unity is not easy to be maintained. It has to be worked for constantly. Because it is easier to say, no, you just need to believe like I do, and then we will all be following Christ as we should be. Unity, on the other hand, is not so easy. Because it is easier to be divided and forget that our unity does come through Christ. Oftentimes we view our faith as an act of charity. I am telling you about my faith because you need what I have. You need to know that my faith is right. But unity in Christ, sharing our spiritual gifts, being witnesses to the body of Christ, is not an act of charity. It is, in fact, the deepest form of faithfulness. It is an act of faithfulness, an extension of the faith of Jesus to seek communion with all those who call upon the name of Christ. In no New Testament list of gifts of the Holy Spirit does one find loyalty to a preacher or cell in the body of Christ, or in a cultural way of life. In no New Testament list of gifts of the Holy Spirit does one find boasting in human capacity or success. Nancy Lammers Gross, a professor at Princeton Theological Seminary, shares a story from her time in graduate school. She says, Many years ago, during my graduate school days, I supplied pulpits during the summers. An old farmer in a rural New Jersey congregation proudly told me that this was his church, and he would stay, quote, if the devil himself was the minister. I remember saying to him, quote, and it's every minister's job to make sure you know the difference between the devil himself and the pastor who preaches Jesus Christ and him crucified, so it never comes to that. As we consider the potential split of our own denomination, I feel like this first Corinthians text says a lot to us. Our theological and ethical disputes, our Controversies over Christian practice are helplessly compromised as soon as we fail to recognize though that those with whom we contend are also in Christ. I feel the anxiety of the denomination, being so unsure of what the future holds and knowing that there are no there is no way to predict the decisions that will come out of the general conference next year. But regardless of what the future holds, regardless of my own anxiety and insecurity, regardless of my views of them, we are united in Christ. And when we celebrate the Lord's table, we are reminded that all people are invited regardless of who they belong to by our own human measures, regardless of which side of the aisle they sit on in the church and politically, our unity is in Christ, and that does not mean there is uniformity. Thank God. 
thank God that each of us brings our own individual gifts to the body of Christ so that there is diversity and beauty and abundance. Our worthiness does not come from anything we have said or done, but it comes from the unending and unconditional love of Christ. And our call as those in Christ is to share the love of Christ to the world. Paul also expresses concern that people in the church at Corinth are separated from each other because they give their allegiance to different people who have been leaders in the community. John Wesley felt strongly about how the church should function. He believed that the leadership of the church had to come from within the laity, which meant he did not like pastors to stay at a church for longer than six months. With pastors also being circuit riders at the time, it meant that churches would not see their pastors on a weekly basis. If you've ever wondered why some churches celebrate Holy Communion on first Sundays and some on third Sundays, it goes back to the circuit riding days when their pastor would be at the church. Week to week, it was the congregation, the laity, who carried out the ministries of the church through their small group meetings that met in their homes. But the point of the itinerancy at its roots is to ensure a church's survival and importance in a community that is not based on who is in the pulpit. Today we know that pastors still itinerate, though we now typically stay a little longer than six months at a time. But growing up as a preacher's kid, I hated the itinerancy because I didn't particularly enjoy moving as often as we did. And as a third grader, I remember having a very distinct thought right after we had moved again. I thought, I am never going to be a pastor. <laughs> because I am not going to make my future hypothetical children move as much as we have. I now feel very sorry for my son. <laughs> but now, as I live into it and looking back on it, I have begun to have a deeper appreciation for it. While it is not a perfect system, it does attempt to pair churches and congregations and pastors in healthy ways so that they can have fruitful ministry together. And at its core, it remembers the work that only the Holy Spirit can accomplish among us. It reminds us that we cannot count on our teachers, preachers, congregations, or ourselves to be faithful. <clears throat> Allegiance to human authorities or structures is an invitation to the powers and principalities to take our focus off of the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God is perfect and extends to the least of us, those of us without intellectual prowess or eloquence so that the message of the crucified Christ is not confused with human ingenuity. No matter who is in our pews and who is in the pulpit, we know that we are called to live out our baptism. And in our baptism, we are not claimed by the pastor who baptized us. We are claimed by God. And because we are claimed by God, our call, the call we receive in our baptism, never fails. Because God never fails. And God invites us into the work as Christ's hands and feet in the world. Remembering that all who believe in him 
shall never die, but have everlasting life. Remembering that we profess the same Christ. No matter who we are or what we believe in the world or anything else, we are united in Christ. And for that, we give thanks. continue to lift them up as well as those who we are unaware need our prayer. Are there any joys or concerns we would like to share this morning? Seeing that, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, opportunity to gather together once more to worship you and rejoice in the ways that you continue to provide for us. Oh God, we lift up to you all of our prayers. For we see the places of hurt and division and disruption in our world and country lives. We see the violence among us. And we pray that your peace and love and grace would be known across all of the earth. We pray that you will continue 
continue to remind us that we are united in your Son. We pray for healing. We pray for health. We pray that you would comfort those in their grief and loss. And God, we pray for the prayers that are deep within us, the ones that are beyond words, the ones that we are unready or unable to share aloud, the ones that are deep within us. Oh God, continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and remind us of our belovedness. Remind us of our call. Remind us that we are one in Christ. And now, as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 557, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer.